Welcome to Instablogs Global Report. This is Sukhmani with fresh updates and citizen voices from all over the world. Top stories for the day are Pakistan faces grim internal security situation. Robert Mugabe and Morgan Shangarai vie for control in Zimbabwe. Local population of Sikapaka in Guatemala facing health hazards. And Egyptian society finally questions the ancient practice of female circumcision. Pakistan is facing a grim internal security situation following the resignation of President Pervez Musharraf. With the local Taliban intensifying activities in the country's tribal regions, the time is running out for the government to curb the terrorist activities. CJ Humantia's report from Pakistan. This is Humantia reporting for Instablogs, a citizen journalist from Pakistan. Contrary to expectations and hopes, a wave of terror and insecurity has followed Pervez Musharraf's resignation as President of Pakistan. 30 people were killed in Dera Ismail Khan in a suicide bombing on Tuesday. On Thursday, over 50 people were killed after two suicide bomb blasts took place outside the highly sensitive Pakistan Ordnance Factory in Wakhant. It appears that the Taliban are stepping up their pressure on the Pakistani government with their former sheriff gone and one demand out of the way. It seems that the local Taliban feel that the government must give in to their demands. Meanwhile, the coalition partners in the government are still debating the reinstatement of judges and who will be the next president of the country. If the government does not take steps to solve these issues and turn their attention to the growing terrorist activities, they will lose the little grip on the country that they have. Negotiations to establish common ground between Robert Mugabe's ZANU PF and Morgan Shangarai's MDC are locked in stalemate after tussle over who gets greater executive powers. CJ Sitolo Kule Fancy has more from Zimbabwe. This is Tolog Lepansa, citizen journalist for Zimbabwe for Instablogs. The negotiations to establish common ground between Mugabe Zanu PF and two factions of the MDC are locked in a stalemate. This should not surprise us because Mugabe attempted to negotiate from a position of power and his demands of absolute control over government and various ministries when unacceptable to the MDC. Mugabe wanted recognition as the duly elected president of Zimbabwe along with control over defense forces and the central bank. It is believed also want the authority to fire the prime minister, a post in all likelihood to be held by Morgan Changirai. Changirai was prepared to give Mugabe the defense forces and the central bank but was not going to hand Mugabe the authority to fire him. In such a negotiation, Mugabe would look to hang on to whatever power he can, while Changirai will want as much executive power as possible. The local mine Indians of Sikapaka, a small town in Guatemala, have protested against open gold pit mining in the region by Gold Corp, world's biggest gold mining company. They claim it's damaging their family and community cohesion. CJ Adam Emin reports from Guatemala. This is Adam Emin, citizen journalist from Guatemala for Instablogs. Gold Corp, world's biggest gold mining company, is shrouded in controversy over its operation of gold mines near the town of Sikapaka in the western highlands of Guatemala. Local mine Indians have said no to the open pit mine they claim is damaging their health and community cohesion. Gold Corp denies this, insisting it brings benefits to local communities, paying on the order of 10 to 12 million dollars just in salaries for people in the local community and Guatemala in general and that it takes social responsibilities seriously. Despite the claims made by the company, a climate of distrust, fear and resentment between the company and mine activists continue to fester. Mines have voted in consulates or referenda saying no to the mine. Protests by local people have been successfully crushed by use of force. How does all this hue and cry bother shareholders who are reaping huge dividends, especially after gold prices tripled, bringing wonderful profits for the company? In a welcome development, the Egyptian society is witnessing a steady decline in the number of young girls being circumcised. CJ Abdul Samir reports on the change from Egypt. Egyptian society has finally begun to question its ancient beliefs and practices. In Egypt, many had a few doubts about female genital mutilation a year ago. But now, the change has germinated at the grassroots level. Women in Egypt have begun to doubt whether to circumcise their daughters or not. Such doubts are significant. 
with the vigorous grassroots campaigns and the passage of tough laws against circumcision. The number of young girls circumcised is now steadily declining in a country where an estimated 96% of married Egyptian women have had their genitals cut. This is a welcome development to prevent the next generation from going under the blade. However, one still doubt as to how long this sins will prevail or given a serious thought in a patriarchal society that often deprive women of their rights. If you want your voices to be heard by millions, let Instablogs be your choice. You can contact us at cj at instablogs.com. That's all for today's show. We'll be back with fresh updates and more voices. Till then, it's goodbye from the entire team, Global Report.